Hey, what's going on guys? Brandon here with Texas Plinking with a video on a very, very interesting subject matter. I'm gonna talk about digital scopes and can they, and to what extent, replace a traditional optic for long range shooting particularly. So we're used to obviously magnified glass. Uh, there's all kinds of ranges of price points and quality, but that's what we know and love. Now real quickly to cut it short, this is the DNT Optics Zulus V2. It's the HD three to 12. And what this is, is actually a digital day and digital night vision scope. Now I've made videos on the old Zulus. I've made videos on the Therm Night from DNT, which has thermal day mode and digital night vision. And when I make videos on those, I usually, you know, side on the whole purpose of it, which is thermal or the Zulus before it was night vision. So I really anchored on that. I really wanted to prioritize its low light and no light capability to showcase how functional it is predator hunting or just shooting at night. But as you can tell, it's broad daylight. And so this video, I'm gonna to totally lean in on a totally different subject matter. And that is, can digital scopes like this replace optics as we know them? Probably not, not fully, but could they be a really cool alternative? Possibly, and in this video, you're gonna see my genuine first impressions on trying to get a digital scope extended to some range here. And so I've already shot a little bit off camera, but nothing too far, just 100 yards, just decided in, zero it, all that kind of stuff. And it went very, very well, and it actually printed a stellar group. So stellar that I'm just gonna to try to do it again on camera. But that being said, I don't know if it's worth making a second video later for the people who are only interested in this for digital night vision and night vision on the cheap. Digital night vision can be had for far, far less because it's a whole different animal. It is, think of it more like a digital camera, but one that is optimized for low light and can pick up on infrared light as well. And so this has a night vision mode. It's not analog night vision where it has intensifier tubes and you could burn them up by looking at something bright and they cost three to you know $8,000 or whatever the price range is nowadays. Uh, this is not that, this is like a digital camera, but it also has a day mode as well. And like I said, we're gonna focus on that part. Uh, but if you guys are interested in its night vision capabilities, let me know and maybe I'll go ahead and make a separate video on it on this channel, maybe my Texas Blinking Gear channel, just so it's not too redundant and I'm showing the same thing too many times, but let me know, I'll totally err on the side of whatever you guys wanna see. But today, talking about digital scopes being used for long range. How functional is that? And why would you want to anyway? Well, DNT is gonna offer this in two different iterations and two different price points as well. One with the LRF, one without the LRF, meaning laser range finder. This one has got the laser range finder. So you can be looking down range, hit the button with the red ring around it, and then it'll tell you the range of that target which is pretty awesome. That's all built into the unit itself, nothing external. And this particular one with the LRF also has a built-in ballistic calculator. So in the menu system, I just go ahead and put in the ballistics of the ammo. We'll dive into that just a little bit more in a second. And so now those two can work hand in hand. So I press the button, as long as I put in my information for the ballistics right, now it tells me where to hold. There's two different options on this particular scope. I can just do a holdover and I'll showcase all this in just a little bit here, but it'll show me a green like line in my vertical axis and that's where I hold over. It won't pick up wind, so that's on you. Or another mode is to not hold over and it re-zeroes itself. So in theory now, as long as you put the information in correctly, you can just aim down range, hit a button and it'll tell you exactly where to aim. Sounds pretty cool, we'll test that out. Another thing is it's really easy to mount in the sense that there is no tube and rings and you have to level it correctly. It just kind of screws into these three or four screws, I forgot how many it was, and then that clamps on here so there's no leveling, you just throw it on the rail and it's mounted. Speaking of levels, there's an internal gyroscope on here so it has all kinds of levels to tell you your shooting angle up and down here, and then left to right your cant. Uh, and it tells you at the bottom of the screen. That being said, it also has internal recording because again, it's like a digital camera. Because it operates like a digital camera, it's also very, very easy to zero. If you've seen my video with the old Zulus or with the Hydras or the Thermite, same thing. Because it's like a digital camera, I could be aiming at 100 yards where I'm wanting to zero it, shoot, and then I could see where the hole is on paper. What I could do then is go in the zeroing menu and then pretty much freeze frame it. Think about like taking a screenshot almost as long as I'm holding where I held when I shot, freeze it, and then you can see the hole bottom left of it or whatever, and while it's frozen, you just move that reticle digitally to that hole, so you kind of have a two shot zero. I just did it off camera and works as advertised. And all the things I mentioned as a pro so far are talking about it as a digital long range scope for the day. Not to mention, of course, it's a night vision scope, digital of course, but one button press here, and then it goes into that night vision mode. It goes black and white and it picks up infrared light and it does have an infrared illuminator attached to it as well. So you have night vision capability with this as well. If you don't get to the night vision mode, what I was really, really surprised with, staying in daytime mode, how well it performed in low light. Of course, it'll get to a point you lose so much light, you'll just go to night vision mode, but you could actually get away 
with using a lot of the scope up until that point. So I was really impressed by that. I don't know why you wouldn't want the laser range finder and ballistic calculator and all that kind of stuff just because the price difference isn't too drastic. Unless you just know for a fact you do not want to extend the range on it. You're shooting 100 yards and in and you just wanted to use it for a predator control at night. Then that makes sense. And that scope starts at, I believe, don't quote me on this, but $499. And this one here, this is the one that I think is most uh, worth using and talking about, especially for this purpose with the LRF and with the ballistic calculator. It goes up another 200 bucks. So this one, I believe, will be $699. DNT is cool enough to hook us up with a code and that is texas plinking very very interesting i still right now even though with very very you know little experience with it so far i can't see them fully replacing these but a really really cool alternative for sure and something that might make medium to long range shooting a little easier as well i mean something's kind of attractive about the idea of just pressing a button and it tells you where to hold minus the wind of course seems very very cool so is it beginner friendly does it make long range easy not to mention it has a night vision mode all this stuff very cool but uh, it does come with a couple of cons I thought about off the top of my head. First off, it's battery powered. This is just good old analog, look through it and shoot it. Uh, simple as that. The other thing is think about a digital camera and digitally zooming. Think about taking a screenshot with your iPhone and zooming into that image, it loses its resolution. And so this being a three to 12, when you zoom in from three to 12, you're not optically zooming in, you are think about it like pinching zoom to your screenshotted image. It's going to get a little bit more pixelated and digital. So optic clarity, you're always gonna win with this. I say always, I don't know what the future holds, but as of right now, optical scopes win in clarity, obviously. But where does that matter? Uh, that would matter in a big thing about why you could correct for missing at long range, and that is seeing your splash. As of right now, I can't speak on this because I haven't even shot this thing at extended range, but that's my only concern really, is if I were to miss targets at 100 even 300 500 i don't know if i can shoot a thousand yards today we're gonna maybe try but if i'm gonna attempt all that if i miss and there's enough dirt splash will i be able to see it through this is it too digital i don't know those are the quick pros and cons i come up with off the top of my head one of those pros being the price point 499 to 699 ultimately isn't bad when you consider day scope night scope laser rangefinder and ballistic calculator if you were to just have an on gun laser rangefinder that's probably the price point of this scope so I don't know what to expect here. I know I've been very, very pleased with DNT offerings in the past, like their Thermite, like their Hydra, but really impressed with that thermal side of things. This doesn't have thermal. It's a digital day and digital night scope. And today we're just talking about the digital day part of it. So I'm excited to see what it does. Now, like I said, I already zeroed it off camera and shot a five round group. I haven't walked up to the group, but it looks pretty stellar to where I'm like, damn, I should have just done that on camera. So maybe it's a fluke, but let's go ahead and digitally record. That way that's gonna be fun for you guys. You guys can see what I see. When I try to do any form of a scope cam with my optical stuff, it just always doesn't work. Tacticam, trigger cam, they usually crash a little too often for my liking. It messes with my eye relief and it's just not uh, so easy to get a scope cam. In this case, just press record. You guys are gonna see what I see. That's kind of fun. And so let's go ahead and record a five round group and just see what the heck we could do on my paper target at 100 yards. And in all that excitement talking about the optic, I totally forgot to mention the rifle we're shooting. This is new to me and uh, it is a CVA Cascade. I don't know all the ins and outs, but I think CVA is kind of like a sister company kind of intertwined with Bergara. So a lot of cool pedigree there, but much, much cheaper price points. And it's interesting because obviously it's a bolt gun and uh, I thought it'd be cool to get a 223 for ammo. Got some Sig Sauer 77 grain OTM 223. Seems to be very, very accurate so far as well. I didn't even mention too much of the differences between the old Zulus and the V2, but one of them is the zoom ring. Isn't this tiny little wheel anymore? It's actually a more uh, similar to a day optic. Uh, it's got this little throw lever that you can remove. I like it actually. Other than that, some differences with this in the last one. Uh, it's got 56% more battery life as well. It's a really stout battery in this compartment. And overall, just a much, much nicer user interface. I didn't think the last one was bad, but I learned pretty much all the ins and outs of it through and through within like five minutes. Now let's go ahead and start recording. So we're at three, four and a half, six, seven and a half, nine, 10 and a half, 12, and that's 12. As far as focusing, that's gonna be this ring right here. I'm gonna go as best I can to see some of the grids on that paper. I'm trying to live up to my expectations of the uh, last grouping. All right, might be uh, single loading the rounds today. What in the world just happened? I have to say this mag doesn't feel of the utmost quality if I do say so myself.
when I was zeroing it in, I landed here, correct a little bit, landed here, made a good correction. So then I went for a five round group and this was off camera. And I swear on my life on this YouTube channel, that's five rounds. It looks super hard to believe. That is under half an inch. I don't know if it's quite a quarter of an inch, but four of those are in the same hole. So when I saw that down range, I didn't even measure it yet, but I'm like, man, the people online are not gonna believe me at all. So let me do one on camera. And I don't know what happened. The magazine exploding maybe flustered me. It wasn't as good. Didn't feel as confident about it, but still not bad. Two of them are in the same hole. If we go furthest edge to furthest edge, I mean, that's still under, that would just stay still. That's still under three quarters of an inch. Yeah, pretty fine group there as well. So very impressed with the rifle and the ammo for sure, but impressed that I was able to do that with a digital scope. Uh, pretty impressed there. So now we know that we have a pretty good zero. There's no turrets to mess with or anything like that. I just went ahead and saved the zero. Just press the save button. No turrets to zero, no zero stop, no nothing. It's simply just zeroed and uh, pretty happy with the zero. All right, so here is our 300 yard target. What I'm gonna do now is hit this button on the side and that's gonna range find it. Then I should get this box. That's what the laser range finder is hitting. So I have to put that box on the target first. And that says 299, very, very accurate. I ranged it roughly 300, it's about 299 to 300. So that's accurate. I'm gonna go ahead and hit that button again. And it's gonna tell me my correction. So now I can go back on target, right there. And it says 1.2 mils or MRAD for 299 yards. But as you can see, when I zoom in here, there's that green line on the vertical line. Let's put that uh, green line right on that silhouette. If I miss, maybe I'll be right. But uh, let's just put it right on there and see what happens. All right, we're in business. Now, I'm just wondering if I were to miss that, could I see where it missed or is it too digital? Fully zoomed in on the scope, you know? Let's go for the circle here. All right, you know what? I did see splash. We missed. I think it was off to the right because of the wind. And I saw a little bit of dirt moving. So I think it sure enough just missed right. So what we'll do is hold maybe just the left side of that plate. Make sure I'm level. All right, it's pretty plug and play. You have to do your part on the winds, but so far at 300 yards, it's, uh, it's working. And I'm glad I was able to miss and see where it missed. That's promising. Moving on to this coyote, which is at 496 yards. I'm gonna hit the button, lock it in. You can tell me 3.2 MRAD. All right, you know what? It's not a hit, but I'm happy because I was so nervous how much I would be able to see. That's pretty damp dirt out there too. And I saw splash right under the coyote. All that tells me is I just need to probably mess with the velocity. I went off what the box of ammo says on the SIG ammo. It says 2,750. The fact that I was low probably means I'm shooting a little bit slower than that. So I could just go to my ballistic calculator, modify that a little bit. So it looks like a hit there. So it looks like so far when I miss, I'm able to see the dust move a pretty good amount. On that steel, I'm not really seeing an impact. There we go. Good hit there. I'm gonna go just smaller. Maybe I'll see dust around that circle a little bit better. Okay, I saw that. That was just right of it. Okay, there we go. Zooming out there, you can see better perspective of clarity when we zoom out some. It says we're at 701. That is in fact my 700 yard berm. Go ahead and zoom into it. I think I saw that just barely right to that silhouette. Pretty sure. So just a wind thing there, elevation looked fine. I had to pull my ear protection off. That was a hit with that crazy hold. All right, so now ranged it at 816. And you can see my green little reticle is off of the vertical line. And so let's go ahead and give it a try here. I'm going to hold just over the circle, going for the tombstone, mind you, but I'm going to hold about here. Ooh, I saw a splash. Maybe just hold slightly left of what I just did. Oh, come on. Even more left. Whew. All 
right, so we got a hit at 8.15. I don't have much rounds left here, but uh, or 8.16 technically. What do I have? Six rounds left. Might as well just dump them at 1,000. If we get one hit, that'll be amazing. So let's just try it out. And once we get to 1,000 yards at 12X, uh, here, we'll go to this range here. Three, and go all the way to 12. Just not the uh, most quality. It's a little overexposed, and so I just don't think we're gonna see much splash at all. I'm tempted to go for the silhouette here, but I think I'm just not gonna be able to see any splash at all, but I won't know until I try. Let's go try to hold over the five inch target, see what happens. Yeah, I don't see anything until I see splash over the berm. It's just so overexposed. Even though it's a smaller target, I think I'm best going for that white 10 inch target in the middle. Just in hopes I can see some splash. To be honest, there's gotta be a way I could go into the settings here and adjust for contrast, but I'm a little lazy. Let's just go ahead and hold by the orange target, go for the white one though. Yeah, just a little overexposed, man. Okay, well I saw that splash, landed right about here. Okay, well that's helpful information. All right, so I splashed at a thousand, I didn't think I would. See anything, got two more rounds. Try it again. All right, windage is getting fixed. Let's hold higher. Last one. I didn't see it. Maybe you guys will. In fact, you guys will for sure have a better point of view just with that camera that's meant for zooming in long, long range. In summary, we have a digital camera for a scope with night vision, with infrared illumination on board, ballistic calculator on board, a laser rangefinder on board. And that being said, here's my honest, honest thoughts with it. Is this replacing this? No, not for me, in all honesty. But is it a cool proposition for something set up for like closer range than that? I would say capabilities between, you know, your zero to even 700 yards was totally fine as well as far as seeing splash. Something about that plug and play, get your ballistics right on the money for sure. And then just something about hitting a button and seeing where to hold, pretty cool. Not to mention it's a night vision scope for under 500 bucks or 699 in this case with the LRF, but just showcasing its day capabilities, not bad. In all honesty, didn't think I'd be making impacts beyond 300 yards just because it's such a foreign world to me. And I did, but not only that, but when I did miss, to my surprise, I was able to see the misses, not all of them, but more than I ever thought I would. And so pretty capable, pretty cool. It's maybe a little gateway for someone who's more techie and wants to get like some easy solution, put the ballistic calculator information once, hit a button and just have the answer for them right away. It's cool, it definitely has merit and that's not even talking about its night capabilities. Obviously some good predator control and night hunting you could do for not a lot of money with its night vision mode. If you have more money to spend, you could get all that with a thermal and that's the therm night. So pretty cool there as well. Again, that's the Zulus V2. If you guys are interested, I'll put a link in the description. Code Texas Blinking saves you guys quite a bit of money. And so that does it. And again, let me know if you guys want to see a video with it for night vision. Maybe it'll be on this channel, maybe my second channel, but we'll go ahead and get around to it if it's uh, of interest to enough people. But that does it. Thanks so much for watching. See you guys next time.